Hello. Hi. <laughs> so today I'm going to talk about my my journey in Kyrgyzstan. So does anybody know where Kyrgyzstan is? Where? Yes, it's like right. It's like here in Central Asia. Okay. And so it's surrounded by um, Kazakhstan. Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, a lot of uh, countries that used to be ruled by the Soviet Union of Russia. And just like some random facts about Kyrgyzstan, it is 5.5 times as big as Taiwan. The size is really big, but it only has a quarter of Taiwan's population. And the languages they speak are Russian and Kyrgyz. And the country is surrounded by mountains, so it's it has a really high elevation, so everywhere you go, you see mountains, 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 and... Okay. This is what Kyrgyzstan looks like. Everywhere you go, it's very natural, and it's extremely beautiful. It's incredible. It's not very polluted. There's not a lot of people, so really, it's just stunning. And everywhere you go, you see mountains and mountains, and maybe sometimes lakes, but you always see animals wild animals everywhere, and sometimes camels too. And sometimes they don't even have roads. Oftentimes you just have to like cross rivers like that. That's your road to get home every day. You don't have pavements, you have water. And people live in, people usually live in traditional yurts. It's called a yurt. It's actually different from a monghu bao, but uh, because it's, uh, the circle is small. So it's it has a taller ceiling, yeah. But uh, this is a really nice one for rich people, and usually people live in this one. It's not decorated, and uh, they have uh, their farm animals in the back, and usually two or three families live together. And despite its beautiful views, it is the seventh poorest country in the world uh, in 2010, and they only earn a monthly salary of. 4,500 NT a month. So that's not a lot. And because of this, there are many problems such as child labor. And uh, so children oftentimes have to help out in, on family businesses and stuff. And so this summer, I traveled to Kyrgyzstan to provide uh, more, uh, give them more opportunities, such as like in education. And I taught them about my cultures, and I taught them about the world beyond Kyrgyzstan. And I also taught them English. So this is this was me and my Ukrainian friend teaching English. So basically, I attended this project through ISEC. And in ISEC, you have um, a group of international team, team teammates with you. So uh, in my project, we had 20 international students from all over the world. And this was me teaching them about Taiwan, and this was their expression when they found out that people in Taiwan eat pig blood. They were disgusted. And this is me giving them gifts, since they don't have a lot of opportunities giving, receiving presents, so they're always really happy and excited when they get gifts. And I gave them lots of um, red envelopes from, um, you know how like during elections, and I gave them those and they were really happy and I gave them fake money and like stickers that said I love Taiwan and since they don't have a lot of opportunities to uh, get in touch with the outside world they really really adore foreigners so this is like me and my Pakistan Polish and Czech Republican friend and like everyone loved us and the kid always the kids, they always argue to hold their hands or they fought. They were like, oh, you already held her hand yesterday. It's my turn today or something like that. And um, they don't really have, like this girl in the picture, she is six, year, six years old. And I met her in one of the villages. Um, even though she still goes to school, like every other kid in the village, she only has that opportunity till the age of 12. And after that, she's going to be working in the family farm. like. All the, fan, or all the generations before her had done. So she already had a planned future. She did not have any other choices or uh, way. She, she couldn't decide her future. It was set for her. 
and that was really like in Taiwan today I have the opportunities to decide what I want to major in, what school I want to go to, uh, what I want to do after I graduate, but there they don't. And it was just really heartbreaking for me. But um, Kyrgyz people, they are really, really happy people. And like all the time, they are so hospitable to everyone, their guests. This was my host dad, and he is just a crazy happy person. He always gives you so much food, so, so much. And we're just like, no, 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 please, please, no more food, we're hungry. We're, we don't eat that much, we, we can't eat. And then he's just like, no, no, you more, you more. So then we were like, okay, maybe it's because the dad can't speak English, so we'll just try talking to the whole sister. So we uh, told his daughter that we can't eat any more food. And we're like, please, sister, we, we just can't eat any more food. And the sister just told the dad, Oh, they said they're still hungry. So the dad was like, you want food, you want food, you want food. All the time, they're just really hospitable. They want the guests to feel warm and happy and leave the house feeling full. So that's their culture. And like, if you don't finish the food on your plate, it's very disrespectful, so you kind of have to finish everything. And this was, okay, so one time I saw these really cute chickens crossing the road, and I was like, oh, so cute. So I took out my camera, and I started following them and taking pictures. And I did not know, but later I ended up in someone's house in, in their garage. And I was like, oh my god, where am I? And just at that moment, these two guys, they, they were driving and they came back to their house. And I was like, oh shoot, <laughs> I'm in a stranger's house. I don't know where I am. I was just following chickens. And so I was like, oh, hi, I'm from Taiwan. At first they stared at me, who is this girl? And they're like, oh, she's, she's a foreigner, she's from Taiwan. So they invited me into their yard, which turned out to be a huge orchard. Of, and they, they planted peaches everywhere. And they gave me a plastic bag and told me to grab all the peaches that I could get and just take it home. So I was just taking pictures of chickens and I got an entire bag of free peaches. It was just amazing. Kyrgyz people always surprised me. And uh, probably one of the most heartwarming stories is that because um, Kyrgyzstan is a really dry country, it's surrounded by mountains, no sea anywhere, so um, you don't really sweat a lot and you don't really smell bad if you don't take showers. So they don't take showers that often, maybe like once a week is good. And so when they found out, when my host family found out that Oh my gosh, Taiwanese people, they actually shower, and they shower every day. So the next day, my host dad and my host brother, they went to their market, and they bought all the supplies, and they built me a bathroom in their house, in their backyard. So incredible. If, if a guest lives in your house, would you like do go out of your way to help them, just to make them feel comfortable? I didn't even ask for a bathroom, but they just built one for me. Incredible, and of course I um, encountered a lot of culture shock. For example, this is uh, what they travel by. It's their buses. It's called mashukas, and basically it's only a little bigger than a van. And uh, every driver owns the buses, so the driver can decide. Oh, today I want to drive two, three, five. And tomorrow I'll drive one, four, three, and like they can change roads every single day. So that was pretty interesting because in Taiwan. The buses belong to the government, and you just drive that road, same road, every day. And um, since they don't produce their own cars, every car they have are second-handed, and every truck they have are Mercedes-Benz. And Benz is like the cheapest car in their country, so every truck is Benz, and pink Benz, too. And they uh, like to take pictures of celebrities, like just put on random advertisements, like this is Selena Gomez. And this is Jackie Chen telling you to eat pizza because it's delicious. Um, and this is where they go for markets. It's kind of like our Taiwanese Taisu Town. But um, they sell everything like food, furniture, refrigerator, you want to buy new bags, anything, anything you can think of. So this is just, this is bread. It's called naan. It's their main source of food. Like we eat rice and they eat bread. This is their traditional clothing. 
This is honey. They eat a lot of honey. Uh, this is like some oatmeal. And this is this is a shoe shop. This is how, where they sell shoes. And uh, a lot of bazaars or markets look like this, where they have the stores on the bottom and they store their all their goods on the top floor. And this is like a toy shop in the bazaar. It's crazy. Like every single every single like stall is a different shop, so it's very competitive. And this is a traditional Kyrgyz wedding. Uh, since Kyrgyz people are Muslim, so this is a mosque. And they just uh, the couple stand in front of the mosque, and everywhere like everyone around the mosque, like outside the mosque, prays for them. It's pretty cool, and they pray like this. Uh, And uh, sometimes they don't have uh, water fountains in the in the house or sinks, so we brush our teeth in the river. And we also drink from the faucet sometimes. But trust me, the water there is really really fresh, like uh, from high mountains. It's even better than the bottled water here in Taiwan. And so I never I never got stomach aches or anything, nothing at all. And this is what they're. A typical bathroom looks like it's usually uh, where you have to like you know and they don't use uh, tissues when they use the bathroom. One time, a little girl saw me carrying a piece of tissue paper to the bathroom, and she was like, "Why do you need a tissue paper?" And I was like, "Oh, because I have to pee." And she was like, "Can you pee while you blow your nose?" And I was like, "Yes, Taiwanese people can do that. We're we're magical." So it's it's pretty crazy, like different cultures. And this is uh, another bathroom. It it doesn't even have a door. And uh, and what you do is you stand on the two bricks and you try not to fall down because if you do, no one's gonna save you. And this is um, their elevator. It is one of the scariest things in the world. It's basically like a cage. And if you want to go up to let's say the seventh floor, you have to press seven like until. You get to the seventh floor because one time, one time, um, I I wanted to go to the seventh floor, and another girl came in and she she went to the sixth floor. So she was pressing six, 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 and then she was like, "Okay, now I'm gonna get off." And I was like, "Okay, just get off. What do you need to tell me?" And so she she was like, "Okay, okay, I'm gonna go now." Okay, I was like, "Okay," and she just left. And I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> So then I found out that when you actually want to go somewhere, you actually have to press the button until you get to that floor. Crazy. And okay, now onto the food in Kyrgyzstan. This is what they usually eat. It's just a lot of um, flour. It's just dianfen flour um, and like bread and apples, banana. Sometimes they don't eat vegetables at all. Maybe sometimes cucumbers, but that's it. Uh, yeah, this is this was like uh, half of our team from different countries. We're, we just eat together, and this is how um, traditionally Kyrgyz people eat. They just uh, they have carpets and they sit on the carpets, and so the the tables are very low. They don't sit on chairs. And of course, I also shared uh, my Taiwanese food with them. I also shared a lot of Taiwanese food with them. For example, I shared huili uh, jajangmian, <laughs> and everyone thinks it's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, and um, one time we also had a table at a department store where we shared about Taiwan. Look, I used lan bai to to, to uh, hold our flag, the sandals, and but the flag is in the wrong way. Yeah, um, and I also taught them to blow the balloons. Have you guys tried? It's, it was really funny. Um, yeah, and it was uh, since Kyrgyz. Really, uh, not many people know about Kyrgyzstan, and not a lot of people go there. So everywhere I go, I was representing my country, and to me, that was like a, a whole new mission on a whole new level to me. And whatever I do, whatever I said, I was representing Taiwan. And I just wanted to, I just want to like encourage you guys to step out of your comfort zone to do what you really love, no matter if it's traveling or anything, and especially if you want to travel. Maybe sometimes you can't choose where you're from, but you can decide where you want to go. And 
I mean, you only have four years of college, so just think, what makes you special, right? You can't always be the number one in class, but you can always be the only one. And so, oh yeah, uh, so talk about traveling, just be a traveler and not a tourist. Yay! And this is like a fan page I made if you guys are interested. Thank you! Thank you.